Saturday afternoon meeting at Chartin for us uh, this week. As we head into March, we are fully in the grip of Derby fever. And we've got another Derby entrance uh, stepping out on the weekend as well. A very warm welcome to Racing to Win. I'm Andrew Lejeune, joined here in the studio by Paul Lally, our former list and race caller, Brett Davis as well. Brett, two trophy races uh, on the programme and these Derby horses. Interesting afternoon. It is, Andrew. Yes, Saturday afternoon at Shah Tim. Weather's expected to uh, pick up a little as well. 26 degrees, about 90% humidity too. So we're certainly heading into spring uh, at uh, this time, uh, early time, of course, of March. And spring means derby, as you've mentioned. Derby horses there sort of looking to just uh, build on what they've already got. Uh, Rivet, Riven are the two that come to mind primarily. Certainly yeah. are. Number of debutants stepping out, Paul, plus two massive jackpots. Yeah, really big jackpots, aren't they? There's uh, 30.6 million for the uh, triple trio, so we're expecting that to get up to about 46 million. And also um, the six-up win bonus as well, 2.7 million there. So there's uh, uh, plenty of money going in. We expect that to get up over six million. And also uh, all those deputy dots you mentioned, um, lots of them. Six mm. in the first to start with. <laughs> mm. Haven't counted them up yet, but I'm guessing there's plenty. There, well, we know there's plenty. We'll do it as we go along. And we're racing on Saturday because on Sunday, Macau. That's right, yeah. Hong Kong Macau or Macau Hong Kong Trophy. Um, of course, the uh, other leg will be here in Hong Kong uh, later on in uh, the year and Hong Kong have two runners of course it's a big day over them over there for them with their uh, their derby and a seven race card to be simulcast myself and the big man to my left will be taking you through that I think Edward Sadler will Here be over are. there as part of uh, the broadcast uh, there'll be plenty of people from Hong Kong heading over actually all right so we'll talk more about that uh, later on and so through the course of Saturday's racing as well as far as the horses that won't be taking part, well, Elegance Promise is out of our opener. So Kiwi Sunrise now gets a start. Karis Teton will be in the saddle for Dennis Yip. Wasn't a bad run last time out either. And in race number eight, Mambo Rock is scratched not replaced. Race eight, number seven, Mambo Rock not going around. So we start the 52nd meeting of the season. On the sea course at Chartin, 10 races, all of them on the turf. We kick off with a class four. It's over the 1,000 metres, six debutants in the opener. Kaki drops down from the 1650 to 1000 class 4 for the first time blinkers come off as well lucky volatility won over this trip on his debut the debutants here cheers and cheers complacency forever smart good luck good luck just not listening and uh, he young pegasus my bear count the filly as well uh, massive move as a course and distance winner in november working all the way down to chaparral start gets the blinkers back on today from eddie lyer returns to the saddle as well all the newcomers are three-year-olds. Lucky Volatility's drawn five. He might have the pace here to zip across. Of the newcomers, there doesn't look to be any sort of horse that's going to blast to the front. But good luck, good luck has shown some speed. Just, just not listening as well. I think My Bearcat's a very interesting runner. Drawn well, can show speed. So um, good as is the expected tempo. And Lucky Volatility probably start favourite. Yeah, looks that way, doesn't he? Here he is. He's uh, getting back to 1,000 metres as well. Um, last start was over 1,200 metres. Uh, his win was over 1,000, so they're, they're taking him back to that distance that he's done well on. Here's a couple of the... Well, here's the first start of Chairs and Chairs with Brett Preble aboard. Just thought I'd show this uh, back straight gallop. He's uh, stretching out nicely. Now, he um, comes up as 1,023 pounds. He's had two trials uh, to go into this, and uh, good luck, good luck. So good they named him twice. He's uh, moving nicely down the back straight as well. He's had two trials and he's 1,208 pounds, so he's a lot bigger horse. And another one that uh, moves fluently, as you can see there, stretches out. And Yitong Pegasus, uh, another first starter. He's coming off the back of a horse, his uh, work partner here. And you can see Zach Purden doing the work on him. Now, he won't be riding him on race day. Matthew Poon will be and will be taking seven pounds off because uh, Zach Purden will be on the favourite. Mm. And he's still a colt as well. They're all three-year-olds, the debutant, but uh, Yichong Premises, uh, Lonro Colt. We'll start off with a horse we've already seen a couple of times, Lucky Volatility. So one down the straight, took him to the 1,000 metres, uh, sorry, to 1,200, and he was run down by potentially quite a good one here in Silver Fig. That's right, Andrew. So the form does read well. Um, there was a lot to like about that debut win over the course and distance of Saturday's race. Jenny suggested from the paddock he was probably a little bit underdone. He ran a terrific race able to win it at 19 to 1 and then cut down here by Silver Fig who does look to be a nice horse. The horse that ran second as well looks like he's got some progress in him. So the key is if Lucky Volatility can get to that outside rail or near enough to it without too much pressure from that awkward barrier, barrier 5, which I think he will, then he'll be the one they have to gun down. 
Yeah, it's just with these newcomers, how good they are, that's the mm. question mark for him. Is there but a silver fig in this, do you think, Paul? I've got one to beat him, yeah. a first starter. But um, I think, uh, so there may be, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I just, he's got the runs on the board. I think that's what we, we, mm. we both agree with. It's just, if you've drawn 12, 13, I'm definitely on top. But five, just puts a little bit of element of doubt into me. All yeah. right, you won from barrier one, so yeah. Yeah, we will true. see. Yeah. All right, well, let's um, start having a look at some of these uh, first starters, uh, along with ju not Justy, but not listening, trained by John Moore. John, just not listening, steps out for the first time on Saturday. What have you made of his barrier trials? Well, just to go back to when he first arrived in Hong Kong, he was a bit of a head case when he first arrived. Now, we've had him since ready to run Gold Coast Magic Million. Uh, we bought him there and um, he was with Brian Guy, did um, the rest of his education and everything, but uh, unfortunately the, uh, the family trait is they can be a bit scattery, but um, we've worked very, very hard um, with him and uh, we've managed to get his um, focused and he's had, what, four or five trials now and his last trial was full of merit. Uh, okay, it was over 800 and a lot of horses can win over 800, but the way he did it and the feedback from uh, Dougie was very positive. So um, I'm going into the race with, um, with, um, you know, with high hopes of him um, being very close. All right, he's a three-year-old by star witness. Um, showed a bit of speed out of the gates that day, Paul. Yeah, he did. One thing, he's been very well educated. He, his first trials weren't that good, but uh, he's improving all the time. His track work is really picking up. He's had the four trials now. He's 1,203 pounds, nice, big, strong horse. I've got him in on a minor line. Shopping elsewhere. All right, OK. Could it include Cheers and Cheers is where you're shopping. Fifth here in uh, this trial. Casper Founds, Brett Preble teaming up. He's not in my tips, Andrew. That bit of track work Paul showed was a nice piece of work. Just here, you can see, I get the feeling the horse is a little bit reluctant with other horses around him. We saw that bit of track work. He worked beautifully, stretched out lovely. Just here, Preble had to coax him. I think he's, um, you know, just feeling the effects of immaturity there in a field. So that concerns me a little bit, but I also think the horse potentially does have a nice little engine there. So under race pressure, he, he might sort of just forget about all those other horses and just run on uh, nerve and... That could be enough. All right, complacency here on the all-weather is a half-brother to contentment. A Group 1 winner here in uh, Hong Kong, uh, Paul. Yeah, he is. He's had the two trials here. Uh, the question mark, he's got drawn barrier two. He's 11.24, so he's quite a big horse. Cheek piece is on for the first time. Uh, I just think he's going to be a bit wide, and I think he'll, he'll come out of the race with a bit more experience. Chad Schofield's done most of the work on the horse. Joe will take the ride on yeah. race day. All right, we'll keep rolling. Good luck, good luck. A um, couple of trials coming in. Look pretty good in both of them. Yeah, he looks a big, strong animal, this guy. This trial here was over uh, 1,000 metres. Um, the other trial we saw was over 800. They were both decent enough. I thought he made significant improvement from the 800 to this one. Um, get the feeling potentially might feel the first couple of hundred metres, but I expect him to stay on well. I like him. He hasn't been let go in any of his trials, and you can see he wasn't let go in that one, so I think he's going to be tough. The horse that was tracking him in the blue jacket is this horse, Yu Chong Pegasus. We see him again here at Happy Valley, so he's a three-year-old colt by long row. Yeah, um, I've got him in for fourth, this horse, but uh, I think he'll need further in time. He might be able to run fresh over 1,000 metres, but I've got him pegged as a horse that uh, will go better over distance, but he's got a very light weight. Same. I like him over further, but I wouldn't be surprised if he tracked up in the last furlong and was darting through late. Um, I think Matthew Poon wrote his first trial, Zach's written the others. Mm. Mm. All right, this is a fascinating race, this one, Paul. Lucky Volatility, the favourite. Yeah, well, I got him in for second. I think he'll run very well. But good luck, good luck, showing me enough in the trials that I think he's a really nice horse. He hasn't been let go yet. Uh, and when he does get let go, I expect a, a, a good uh, feel from him. So I've got him on top to beat Lucky Volatility from five. Just not listening, he's been very well educated. Four trials, John Moore has been very patient with this uh, horse and the hood goes on and Yi Chong Pegasus will get back. He'll be running on late. So Quinella, Quinella places for me. Going to go with the proven form at this stage of another young horse, but he's had two starts. He's done it under race pressure, Lucky Volatility. I'm going to make my Bearcat the long shot, currently $60. This has trialled well recently, trialled well before its debut, went terrible on debut, beaten 20. David Ferraris has put her in a little bit of cotton wool, this uh, young filly by Husson. And I think from the outside barrier, she'll run a good race with some nice trials leading in. I like Yi Chong Pegasus and good luck, good luck of the newcomers heading forward uh, in this race particularly. The other sort of four, I think, have got you know, scope to improve, but for this race, those two go in. Yeah, lucky volatility for me then. Three of the first stars, I think they all look quite good. That's the opening event.